If I asked you who's the greatest running back in NFL history, who would you say? Maybe Emmitt Smith with his most rushing yards ever? Maybe you value skill and peak more and say Barry Sanders. Or maybe you're a touchdown guy and say LT. Well, what if I told you a lot of people's opinions would be different if it wasn't for one specific play in 2004? The running back position is one of the most controversial positions in all of sports. I mean, you hear everything going on about it in the current state of the NFL where these players just want to be valued and paid correctly. Josh Jacobs had over 2,000 yards from scrimmage two years ago and couldn't get a contract from the team that drafted him. One of the best players in New York Giants history in Saquon Barkley literally couldn't even get an offer from them. And you see these type of situations with the top end running backs in the league time and time again. Well, let me take you back to a time where the running back position was at an all-time high, the 2000s. In this time, it felt like literally every team had a running back that could run for 1,500 yards a year. I mean, just look at this list of running backs in 2005. Larry Johnson rushed for 1,750 yards and scored 20 touchdowns and wasn't even first-team All-Pro. Blinton Portis had the fourth most rushing yards in the league and also scored 11 touchdowns and couldn't even make the Pro Bowl for crying out loud. And just to further prove my point, in 2004 and 5, there were 18 1,000 yard rushers in both of those seasons. If you were to combine the 2020 and 2021 1,000 yard rushers, there would be 16 total. I mean, this is just simply a different time for the running back position. We hear it all the time in today's NFL that the MVP is a quarterback award. If you're not the quarterback on the best team in the league, well, good luck winning it. But what if I told you from 2000 to 2009, three running backs won the MVP? Falk in 2000, Sean Alexander in 05, and Tomlinson the following year in 06. Now with all these statistics and great names I've mentioned, only one running back during the 2000s has one of the greatest feats in NFL history and was named a three consecutive first team all pros. A feat so impressive that it hasn't been done since, and his name was Priest Holmes. Holmes went undrafted in the year 1997 by the Baltimore Ravens but was never utilized to his full potential. In four seasons with the Ravens, he would have a total of 459 carries. That would put his average around 114 per year. Just so you know how low that total is, in 2023, Deontay Foreman had 109 carries and only played in nine games. And in 2000, after just four seasons with the team, the Ravens would go on to draft Jamal Lewis with the eighth overall pick to be their franchise running back. And Priest's value to the team was diminished to nearly nothing after that. In the following season, Holmes would sign a massive deal at the time for a running back, a five-year deal worth around $11 million per year, and let's just say he would waste no time asserting his dominance and would earn every penny of it. You're going to have a hard time finding a running back to have a better stretch than Holmes did from 2001 to 2004. Now I could just show you his stats at face value and tell you, hey, these yards and touchdowns are good, but I'd rather this be a little more fun. Here's a graph that shows every running back to have 50 plus total touchdowns over a three year stretch along with their games played. Ladanian Tomlinson has the record at 69 while playing 16 games in all three seasons. During Gurley's prime, he got himself 54 in 44 games. Larry Johnson has the lowest total on this list, but also has played the lowest games of anyone here. But there's one thing all these running backs have in common, and that's games played. Every single one of these players here has played at least 42 games, except Priest Holmes, who only has three less touchdowns than the record holder and did it in 10 less games than him. To put that into perspective, CMC this past season scored a league high 21 touchdowns and set the record for most consecutive games with a touchdown. In order for CMC to have a run similar to what Holmes did, he would have to score at least two touchdowns in all 17 games next year and then keep that up for the first seven games of the following season as well. Dominance is an understatement to how Priest performed during this stretch, and I'll show you exactly why. From 01 to 04, Holmes did something only eight running backs have done in NFL history. Over this four-year stretch, Holmes would average 101 rushing yards per game, and here's every running back to do such a thing. Barry Sanders, Eric Dickerson, Walter Payton, Terrell Davis, Adrian Peterson, Emmitt Smith, Derrick Henry, and Sean Alexander. But this isn't the only ridiculous feat Holmes had. He also had three 2,000 total yard seasons, which only five running backs have done, and maybe his wildest stat yet, Holmes also had two 20 touchdown seasons back to back. So from 01 to 04, Holmes averaged 101 rushing yards per game, had three 2,000 yards from scrimmage years, and also had 20 touchdowns in back-to-back -back years. And here's a list of every running back to do such a thing. 
oh wait, there isn't, because Priest Holmes is truly a one of one. A player that went undrafted, was underutilized by his first team, and didn't get a real opportunity until he was 28 years old, went on a four year stretch that literally no running back has ever matched in NFL history. And to finish out just how ridiculous this run was, Priest Holmes suffered a spinal injury in 2004 that would unfortunately be the downfall of his career. In that 2004 season, Holmes played 8 games and here are his stats from that time. 196 carries, 1,709 total yards, and 15 total touchdowns. Now let's try to speculate how this year would have went if Holmes had stayed healthy for just this final year. Holmes was averaging 134.9 total yards per game and 1.7 total touchdowns per game. But instead of taking the easy way out and taking everything Holmes did in those first eight games and multiply that by two, let's say he slumps a little bit in the second half. His total yards per game goes from 134.9 to 118. His touchdowns go from nearly two a game at 1.7 to just one. What would his numbers have looked like if he finished the season out like this? Well. Holmes would have had another 20 touchdown season and another 2,000 total yard season. Four straight years of 2K yards and three straight of 20 total touchdowns. And when I say this would have truly been the greatest stretch we would have ever seen from any player in NFL history, I mean it. No other running back, no wide receiver, not even a quarterback in NFL history has matched this type of dominance for four consecutive years. Now, in my personal opinion, does Priest Holmes deserve a spot in the Hall of Fame? You know, it's tough to say. His peak was one of the greatest of all times, and there's a lot of players who are currently in the Hall of Fame and have done a lot less for the game. But neither here nor there, I just wanted to give my flowers to one of the greatest to ever do it, and one of the many players in NFL history who unfortunately got their career cut short due to injury. Hope everyone who watched this video learned something and also enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Peace.